Okay, hello folks. This is Mr. Heyer. We're going to be looking at Coulomb's Law today. Um, this is the last of uh, the new material for this unit. Um, after this, you're going to be working on your performance exam project, and we'll just be doing some review. We're going to do some practice as well next week. All right, so let's first of all, let's just look at a diagram of the hydrogen atom. All right, take a second before I do it and label the proton in the nucleus with a positive sign and the electron with a negative. I'm going to pause for just a second. Okay, so positive nucleus, negative electron. Okay, what type of force is this? Is it attraction or repulsion? Opposite charges do what? They attract. So that's going to be the attraction. Okay. Now, this is the equation. We're going to deal with this equation more in a, in a little bit. Um, but F, the force between these charges, is equal to some constant K that we'll talk about later, times Q1, Q2, charge 1 times charge 2 over the distance squared, um, which should look a little bit familiar to you, um, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Okay, if the charge of either the nucleus or the electron or the, the force what would, what would happen to the force? If either Q1 or Q2 were bigger, what would happen to the force? If, if the numerator gets bigger, the whole thing is going to get bigger. If the distance gets bigger, then that's a denominator, so we know that's going to get smaller. Right? And if the distance were doubled, it's going to be, the force would, do, would be how much? It would be 2 in the denominator, but we got to square it. So 2 squared is 4, so it would be 1 fourth as much. All right, so here's our equation. So Coulomb's law is F times Q1 times Q2. Um, well, let me say that again. So the, the force between two charges is K, which is a constant, times Q1 times Q2 over D squared. Um, that should look familiar because the force of gravity equation was very similar, right? But instead of Qs, you had Ms for masses, and instead of K, you had G, but it was just another constant. We will get into what the constant K is in a couple of slides. Okay, but let's look at some similarities between them. First of all, they're both what are called inverse square laws, meaning that they're both inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Right? Obviously, the difference is that electric force can be attractive or repulsive depending on if it's light charges or unlight charges. Right? And the other diff big difference is that the electric force is much, much, much bigger than the gravity force. All right, so here's our equation. If the charge of one of the particles is doubled, what happens to the force? Okay, so if the charge of one of these is doubled, the numerator is going to go increase by 2, and nothing else changes. So it's just going to become 2 times greater, so it's going to be doubled. Very so let's do the next one. If instead the charge on both particles is doubled, and that's going to be 2, and that's going to be 2, and everything else stays the same, that's going to become 4 times bigger. So quadrupled. This time the distance is halved. All right, so now the denominator becomes 1 half, but it becomes 1 half squared. So 1 over 1 half squared becomes 1 over 1 fourth, or 4. So it becomes 4 times bigger. That's a tricky one. If you're not sure about that one, come back and ask me a little bit later. We'll come and check in after we uh, kind of talk about all this, and if you still have questions, ask away. And the final, if the distance is halved and both of the particles are doubled, well, we already know that cut that Cutting it in half makes it four times greater. And doubling both particles charges makes it four times greater. So four times four times is 16 times. So it becomes 16 times greater. 
All right, so here's another example where we're just looking at the values. We're not actually doing any calculations here. All right, so we're going to change, use the arrow's length and direction to show how the force vectors change. All right, so for the first one, we have a positive 2 and a negative 3 charge. They're attractive towards each other, and they're this length. Remember, the forces are the same. What if one of what if they're both positive now? Right? If that's the case, then their forces are going to be this about the same length. And I would expect you to draw it close to the same length. It wouldn't have to be exact. Right? But they're going to be repulsive. Right? What if they're both positive? But one of the charges doubles. That means, of course, that the force doubles. So we're going to draw a line away. That is twice as long. Again, approximately, just do your best on that. All right, the next one is positive 2 and negative 3. So same thing as up here. So it's going to be, the forces are going to be inward, right? But they're farther apart. It looks like about twice as far apart, which means it's going to change it by one fourth. Which means we're going to draw a much smaller line. Okay, I'm not going to sit there with a ruler and see if you get it exact. But that gives you the general idea. All right, now the last one is that two positive charges, initial charges, but now they look like they're closer, but they may be twice as close, which means the force is going to be four times bigger, right? And these are positive, so it's going to be away. So I'm going to draw really long lines, right? They should be horizontal, but that's good enough. All right, again, I'm not going to measure them. They just need to be obviously much, much longer. All right, so let's talk about actually solving this equation, all right? F equals kq1, q2 over d squared. F is the electric force. Sometimes you'll see it written as Fe. Um, K is what we call Coulomb's constant because Coulomb, Charles Coulomb was the guy who actually figured this out. Q1 and Q2 are charge 1 and charge 2, and d is the distance, all right? Then this value for k is 9 times 10 to the 9th. Notice that this constant is a much bigger number than g. Remember, g was 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. So this was a really, really small number. This is a really, really big number. It's one of the reasons we're able to say that the electric force is much bigger than the gravitational force. All right, so make sure you have this number somewhere where you can use it and get to it anytime you need it. You don't have to memorize it, but you need to be able to use it. All right, so let's look at some examples. Okay, one object. One object has a positive charge of 6 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, and the other object carries a positive charge of 3 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. They're 0.03 meters away. What is the force between them? All right, so of course we use the equation. And then we just plug in our numbers 9 times 10 to the ninth times 6e negative 6, 3e negative 6 divided by 0.03 squared. Just put them in your calculator just like that and see what you get. Pause it for a second. Well, you do this, right? and then the answer would be 180 newtons. Hopefully you got that. If not, double-check your um, scientific notation and double-check that you put everything in correctly. Okay, and what is that attractive? They're both positive. Positive, whoops, sorry. Positive charge. Positive charge. So this is a repulsive because they're, they're like charges, so we know that they're, they're going to repel. Okay, the, what is the second charge if a 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 Coulomb charge experiences an attractive force of 100 newtons at a distance of 0 0.01 meters? All right, so this time we're looking for, basically, we're looking for Q2. All right, so we know the force, right? This is the force. No, sorry, I said that wrong. This is Q1. This is the force. And this is the distance. All right, so we plug in the numbers and then we solve for Q2. Easiest thing to do first is go ahead and multiply this out first. 9 times 10 to the 9 times 1 times 10 to the negative 7 divided by 0 0.001 squared. And you end up with 100 equals 9 million Q2. And you end up with a charge of. 1.1 times 10 to the negative 5 coulombs, but you know it's negative because it's an attractive force because the two charges attract one another. All right, so again, the negative sign 
is not part of this problem, but we know it's negative because it's being attracted to a positive charge. This is a positive charge, so the other one must be a negative charge. And the last one, find the force between a proton and an electron that are separated by 1.5 times 10 to the negative 1 meters. All right, we just have to remember that the charge of a proton and the charge of an electron are 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. One's positive and one's negative. But in the equation, we're not going to put them in. We're not going to put them in as a negative number. We're not going to put the charge of an electron in as a negative because that doesn't really mean anything. We just know that since a proton and electron, if this is a proton and this is an electron, we know that the force is going to be attractive. We don't know if it's going to be to the left or to the right or whatever. This allows us to do that. All right, so 9 times 10 to the ninth times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 times 1.6 times the negative 19 because this is the Q of a proton and this would be the Q of an electron divided by the distance squared. All right. And we end up with 0 0.000102 meters. Or you can put that in scientific notation as well. Right? And the direction is going to be depending on where the objects are. So I'm not really too worried about a direction here. Then we just know that it's going to be we know that it's going to be an attractive force. So we'll put that. Attractive force. All right, so I want you all to start practicing these problems that come along with it. Next, um, tomorrow, um, well, you've already gotten the assignment for um, the performance exam um, in the project. I'm going to give you all class time both Monday and Tuesday to work on that. All right, and then on Wednesday, we're going to spend some time looking at these problems and make sure that you can do it. Remember that performance final is due on Wednesday by midnight. But you're going to have Monday to work on it and Tuesday to work on it. Monday, you'll be able to ask some questions. If you need um, to come on Zoom to ask about the project, you can. On Tuesday, I will not be available um, because that is a uh, asynchronous work day. All right, so you all have a um, great weekend and work hard on this project. And make sure you can solve these problems. All right, see ya.